Hey everybody, it's Frozen with Outdoor Adventures and thanks for joining me. Today we're going to talk about my first aid kit, my emergency kit, and a couple miscellaneous items that don't really have a category. So we're going to talk about that. First off, let me apologize for sounding so congested. I actually am battling pneumonia right now of all things. I'm on antibiotics, nothing to worry about. Should be perfectly fine for February 23rd. Anyway, let's dive into the table, run through this stuff real quick. There's not going to be a whole lot of information. I just want to talk about some things and why I'm actually bringing them. All right, we're down at the table. Let's go over a couple things. This is also going to be a hygiene kit. I should mention that as well. Most of everything you're about to see is going to be stored in this light AF ditty bag, but we're going to get into that. Okay, so let's first just run down the items. Let's knock off the trekking poles first. These are a pair of carbon TI poles by Lecky. Really no complaints about them. I don't hate them. I don't love them. If these happen to break, I'm not going to cry about it, but I am going to be replacing the tips before I leave because they're about ready to be replaced and I'd rather do it before I leave rather than really early on the trail. Should mention most of the kits are basically stored in just these uh, Ziploc quart size freezer bags. That's where I like to keep them. So everything will be kind of be stored in one of these little bags. Uh, all right, first item, first real item. The Chi Whiz trowel. This is a titanium trowel. It is super, super light. I think it's worth carrying. I used to kind of dig a cat hole for pooping in, you know, with a, like tent stakes, ground stakes. And I did that for a couple years and I tried, just wanted to try one of these. And this thing is amazing. It's definitely worth the one ounce or two ounce it is to carry it with me. Second, I'll always have some wet wipes. These are antibacterial, uh, clean wounds, polish off your rear view mirror, whatever you want to do with these things, you know, wipe down at the end of the night. These are amazing. And they really, really do clean up back there. In addition to that, toilet paper, all right? I'm a double ply kind of guy for the people that like to do one square per day budget. I don't know how you do it, but more power to you. I am not that person. I will be carrying lots of toilet paper. Next item is baby powder. This stuff is amazing to stop butt chafing or monkey butt as a lot of hikers call it. Uh, the reason monkey butt happens is you're walking down the trail, your butt cheeks are sweating and they're kind of just rubbing against each other. This stops the sweat. This is amazing. If you haven't tried this, try it out. You can also put this a little bit in your shoe to kind of not only make it smell a little bit better, but to dry your shoes out at night. All right, fire starter. I haven't applied the Vaseline to these, but this is going to be Vaseline soaked cotton balls. I'm not the kind of person that really cares to have a fire every night. I really don't give a crap. Um, if I need to have a fire though, I will have some fire starter if it's an emergency. Okay, let's move on to, uh, let's seriously just go down the list. So like, like I said, this is a whole bunch of kits combined. I consider this part of my uh, repair slash emergency kit. This is just some Cuban fiber tape. Uh, I know that I have a lot of Cuban fiber items. So backpack, uh, tarp, rain mitts, a whole bunch of stuff, stuff sacks. These I can just cut off little pieces and just patch my items up. Uh, I got some just strips and then I have a like a big giant patch for tarps or whatever I need to carry while I'm out there. Now I do have a Cuban fiber tarp so if it starts to leak or if I need to retape it I will be doing that. All right medications. I'm bringing four different types of medications on the trail with me. Uh, I'm getting all this brand new and I'm gonna put some expiration dates and what the pill is. So we got some Benadryl first. It's good for any kind of allergic reactions as far as bee stings. It does also help you go to sleep at night, but I don't think I'm gonna need that. Uh, I will take that under extreme circumstances, so don't worry about abusing the pill. Also, ibuprofen. This is not all the ibuprofen that I'm probably gonna use on the trail. Once I'm in town, obviously I can add some more. Prilosec. I have some acid reflux issues. I know that I have them, so I will be carrying just a couple Prilosec pills. If you guys have any other suggestions on that, let me know. Uh, finally, I got to get new ones of these. These are expired now. I just made another order. These are poop pills. On the Spirit Hike Control, I actually had to use these, so these are definitely coming with me. I can resupply into town as needed. Basically, these stop diarrhea. They're anti-diarrhea pills, and I think every hiker should have them because if you have diarrhea out there, not only are you weakening your body, but you're also dehydrating your body. A couple straws full of Neosporin. Once these run out, I just kind of had these from backpacking trips. Once these run out, uh, I'll just pick up a very small tube in town. 
Most important item that you're going to see on this table is this small safety pin. This is not meant for holding clothes together or anything like that, but this is actually meant to pop blisters. So you can kind of pop a blister um, and you know make sure you sterilize it with a lighter, obviously, and just pop through the blister, leave it in there for a second, pull it out and squeeze the fluid out. So that's pretty much all I use this for, but this is like a definite staple in my pack. Speaking of blisters, we are talking about Lyco tape or Luco tape, however you want to say it. It's just some really, really sticky tape. It's really good. It holds against your skin well. Um, it provides a little bit of a waterproof area too, so that's helpful. And I just have it wrapped around a drinking straw. All right, let's talk about these. So I do bring some matches on the trail because I've had my lighters get wet for whatever reason. Now I do keep a spare lighter in my ditty bag, which is, you know, it's a roll top bag, so it's not going to get wet. I do keep a lighter in here, but just in case, I will be bringing a book of matches. I might drop them. I don't know. We'll see. But what I noticed was when I checked these, this is actually really funny. These ended up getting wet. So I cannot light these matches. Why did they get wet? It's probably due to the humidity. So I wanted to tell people about these desiccant bags. You may have seen these in like your electronics or something. These are actually made to, they're not like rat poison or anything. These actually absorb moisture out of the air. So any kind of water that gets in contact, any kind of moisture, this sucks it up like a sponge. So I'll be, be throwing in one of these because this also is going to hold my electronics. So one of these should be perfectly fine. All right, just in case I get attacked by a bear, I am bringing a giant humongous knife. This is a Victorinox um, Swiss Army knife. It has literally everything I need. It has tweezers. It has a um, toothpick in here just in case. Uh, these tweezers, unlike most Swiss Army knife tweezers, you can actually take ticks off with these. So that's the reason why I'm carrying these. Uh, the knife is great for opening up reek supply packages. And then also this thing has a pair of scissors, which are going to be helpful. It also has a little screwdriver set if, just in case I need to do any kind of modifications or adjustments on my trekking poles that's there as well uh, but yeah a little just a tiny little knife this is all i'm going to need this is all i've ever need if you want to carry a bigger knife that's up to you i will not carry a big knife though all right another thing i'm going to be bringing was a little signal mirror now i don't use this specifically for a signal mirror this has multi-purpose things obviously if i'm bringing it it's going to be multi-purpose uh, this is a good mirror for putting in and taking out your contacts it also doubles as a mirror that you can see your rear end just in case you have some ticks you need to do a little spot check and you don't want to have your friend look at your butt this is going to act as that purpose right here also on the back and i don't know where it is right now but i usually have a little like sewing needle where i can use dental floss and sew up you know whatever clothing or backpack or gear or anything that i need i get to put that back on there and all i do with that is just i just tape it with some masking tape uh, right to the back of this and it it's rigid. I mean, this thing doesn't bend, so you're not going to have it stabbed through any of your gear. All right, this little doodad right here is an O-ring or a gasket, whatever you want to call it, for a Sawyer squeeze. Now, on the Linville Gorge Trail, I ended up losing this. I was filtering water and this just fell right out. Uh, this is the thing that kind of makes the seal between your water bottle and the Sawyer squeeze filter. So I, I just ended up going to Home Depot, got one of these. Uh, this fits the Sawyer squeeze and I'm just going to carry with me. I mean, this weighs maybe a gram. And I think it's going to be worth it instead of having to worry about, um, you know, if I lose it, then you can't filter the water because you can't make a good seal. All right, we talked about the contact case already, so let's get that out of the way. Be bringing some super glue, a little tube of super glue to fix whatever. Um, I might put this in a little tiny plastic bag. We'll see. You know, so maybe um, maybe I'll throw it in with my fire kit. Maybe I'll do that. Uh, just in case this ends up getting a hole in it, I definitely don't want to have it leak all over the place. Um, this is mainly, honestly, not only for fixing gear, but this is to glue the Ultra Lone Peak insoles down. Because for whatever reason, whenever my Ultra Lone Peaks get wet, the insole slides around. So just a couple drops of super glue on the insole whenever I get new shoes, and I'm good to go. I already talked about the lighter. Uh, body Glide. I might end up dropping this on the trail. I haven't used this for years. But I figured I'd start with it just in case because this is so new to me and I would be hiking for a very, very long time, obviously. But this is just for, you know, problem areas on your feet or any kind of body chafing. 
You can also use this as deodorant. I really don't recommend it, even though it works to clog your pores. Um, it, it's really, really sticky. So, but it can be used for it. I have used it before. All right, we have some Purell. I need to replace this bottle because I believe it is almost empty. But this just has a little like carry loop on it. And this is just gonna hang off my shoulder strap the entire trail, just something easily accessible uh, that I can get in and out of. So Purell hand sanitizer. You can also use this to clean up, you know, wounds or whatever. It burns a little bit, but it's fine. Deal with it. This, this is going to be another one of my staple items. This is Rocket Pure hand and foot balm. My feet don't necessarily get many blisters anymore. They're kind of hardened up. They're toughened up, but they do crack after they get wet. So what I do is I just put a little bit on my finger and put this on my feet at night. This also doubles as chapstick, FYI. It works perfectly fine. And um, it works out great. It has with lemon grass oils and tea tree. So it smells really nice too. Um, I will be hanging this at night just in case though. This first aid kit thing right here, it's not gonna be a first aid kit. This is probably going to be my wallet. I'm either gonna use this or a Z-Pax wallet that I already have as well. We'll see. I'm not sure I'm still up in the air about it. This sit pad, okay, this weighs like 20 grams. It's absolutely amazing. It's closed cell foam. My thoughts for doing this is since everybody recommended that I get some sandals for in the shower, I guess, at these hostels, apparently they're really dirty. Uh, it started to get me freaked out about it, so I figured I was already carrying this. If I really feel like there's some dirty places in the hostel showers, I'm just gonna step on this. I don't wanna bring camp shoes. I don't wanna keep track of them. Um, this will be perfectly fine if I do feel like, uh, you know, if I need to step on something that offers plenty of room uh, in the shower. So, plus it's uh, anti-slip, so it's even perfect. Uh, and this is really light. This is from DutchwareGear.com. All right, let's run through the bear bag kit and we'll talk about the last item. All right, bear bag kit is gonna consist of a light AF flat bottom bear bag, a light AF rock sack, a Dutchware gear PCT stick. This is really, really cool. Basically, you just kind of wrap your line around here. It gets stuck on the carabiner and it's pretty much exactly like the PCT style hang that I know and love. This thing weighs practically nothing. I might even cut this stupid rope off because I don't see me ever using it. Um, I just don't see a point to it. So I might take that rope off and this is just gonna stay uh, in this sack right here along with the bear line. The bear line is 50 foot of Lawson reflective line. And all those items just end up going inside the bear bag kit. Now I said this was a flat bottom bear bag. What that means is the, they actually kind of beveled the bag out so it stands up straight. It doesn't kind of fall over whenever you put stuff in it. And this also acts as a wind break or a wind screen to my stove, my, my canister stove. So I'll be bringing that. Like I said, everything is gonna be staying inside this light AF ditty bag. My electronics will also be in here. We'll deal with that in the next video. That's gonna be a fun video because I don't have everything ready for that yet. I'm still testing out battery banks, unfortunately, but we'll get it done. All right, the last item that I wanna talk about, and this is something that you guys that have been following me haven't seen. This is just like a, a medicine ball, a massage ball. Um, it's a really dense, ball. It's almost like uh, if you want to picture like a golf ball with little spikes on it. Uh, what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to basically um, any kind of plantar fasciitis uh, issues. This is what's going to fix that for me. Uh, whether I'm in town or on the trail, this is going to work very, very good. I've had this on a couple trips this year with it and it's been working absolutely amazing. I can also roll out my IT band with this. So instead of bringing one of those big, um, those foam rollers or one of the massage sticks. I'm just going to bring one of these. And this has been, like I said, working out great. So, uh, you know what else I didn't talk about? The toothbrush and toothpaste, I don't think at least. All right, so that was pretty much the miscellaneous kit, the emergency kit, the repair kit, the hygiene kit, all the kits in one video. Thought we could knock it out in one video. Anyway, the last thing I want to talk about, potentially carrying a knee brace too. I know my left knee is fully healed right now, which is great. It's been a long time since uh, that injury occurred and it just started feeling pretty good the past couple weeks, uh, which is a little scary to me. So, you know, I don't want to jeopardize my through hike. If you guys have any good knee brace ideas, I want to hear about them in the comments. Okay, please tell me. 
I do have a knee brace here. I'm not a fan of it. I don't think it wraps around tight enough and it kind of slides up and down as I'm walking, which is really, really annoying. So I think I'm gonna carry a knee brace at least for the first, I'd say 300 miles, pretty much the winter section of the trail is what I'm gonna do. And, um, um, and I just you know, wanna make sure that everything is taken care of. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Uh, this kit really doesn't weigh a lot. I've kind of dialed this down. I know everything works, and this is just what I'm going to be bringing for all my kits out on the Appalachian Trail. The next video is going to be all about electronics, and this is something that I'm still working on. I'm still uh, messing around with battery banks, and uh, we'll see what I end up going with. I need to do a little more testing, so hopefully that video comes out on time. It will be out at some point next week. I'm just not sure it's going to be out for the Wednesday at 3 p.m. like you guys are used to seeing. Finally, to wrap up this video, I just wanted to say that I am finally out of work. Uh, yeah, I don't have a job right now. Well, technically I don't have a job right now. I don't have to go into work anymore. I am officially a contractor. I'm getting paid until about mid-March because I am get to cash out my paid time off, which is fantastic. I'm really glad they did that for me. So. Right now, it's going to be all about planning. I still need to pick up some insurance, and we'll see how everything goes. Anyway, thanks for watching. Sorry if this video ran kind of long, but I'm getting ready. I'm so excited, and I have lots of announcements for you guys in the electronics video. Thanks for watching, guys. See you in the next one.